Our next topic are uh, convolutional neural networks. These are very popular models for image processing because they, uh, they capture local features quite well. Um, and we're going to use some data from the, the CIFAR 100 data set. This is one of these uh, big data sets that are curated by the, the deep learning community to sort of compare different models. Uh, and the 100 stands for 100 data classes. Yeah. So it's a 100 class classification problem. Yes, so for reference, a random guessing here should be about 1% accurate. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay, so um, so the, the pattern is going to be similar to the hitters in MNIST data. We will sort of specify the data sets, and then we'll specify the, uh, the, 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 mod the network, that is how features are transformed to scores, define the loss, define the fitter, and then look at the results. Okay, for the CIFAR data comes packaged uh, in the Torch Vision package, which is convenient. To f in order for us to fit it, we're going to actually do a little bit of pre-processing. Uh, this is done here. All that's going on here is it's rescaled to, to be floating point from 0 to 1 instead of integer 0 to 255, and just reorders the, the arrays, uh, so it does a little transpose. OK, so then we, spe we have our data module, like we did for the other examples. We have a training data, test data, and we'll use 20% of training data as validation. And each batch will be of size 128. So these, these input images, it's three-dimensional tensor, right, Jonathan? That's because right. Three color That's channels. Yes, yeah. yeah. So uh, images, uh, color images are represented as RGB. Mm. So there it's, uh, oh, I think Trevor is talking about this three here yeah. in, in look, when we look at the different data set. So the, um, the images are th have three channels. Uh, and are 32 by 32. This, uh, these are RGB channels. There's also RGB alpha, perhaps. And the, the MNIST data, actually, this was a 1 here. But um, So we're showing you what a typical batch looks like? Cause yes. We've got batch size of 128 here. That's right. So there's 128 images randomly selected for a batch. And, th and then those are the dimensions, 3, 32, 32. Yes. Yeah, this is just a sort of sanity check to see that the We've made the data loader, uh, that we understand what the data is looking like when it, before it goes in. So let's just take a look at you know, these images to see uh, the resolution is not, uh, it's not great. It's 32 by 32, but they're still recognizable objects, right? This one is a wolf. This one might be Bigfoot, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> uh, this is an apple. That's the nice thing about having uh, images as, as data observations, because you can look at them. Mm -hmm. Usually, you can't look at high-dimensional data so nicely, but images you can. Yes. OK. Um, so now we're going to define our neural network. And what we're going to do is, as is common in these, in these tasks, is we'll, we'll sort of make a sort of multi-scale kind of version of the analysis. That is, we're going to do a convolutional filter. That's this conv2d from the, um, the NN module and apply no the ReLU, and then max do what's called a max pool over the output. And we're going to do this at several different scales. So the way we're going to do this is to define a basic layer that we'll call building block. And we'll use building blocks of different sizes in this multi-scale kind of network. You, by the way, you should have read the chapter on convolutional neural networks um, before doing this lab, because it'll be much more understandable. And then you'll understand the idea of doing convolution and pool in, 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 in that order sequence of those operations. Yes, yes. This is, of course, just the lab. Um, and so what we're doing here is effectively um, making a new type of layer. So we've already seen some of the some of the layers that are in this NN package. We've seen like NN.sequential, NN.linear, NN.relu. These are all the kind of operations that can be done by one of the nodes. And here, NN.conv2D is one of those. So what we're doing here is essentially making our own layer that we're going to later use to build in our, in our CIFAR 100 network each layer, each of these convolution and max pool layers. OK. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to make a sequence. As I said, we're going to use our building block um, and apply this convolution and max pool on different scales. And the scales are going to go as follows. These numbers here are the channels that are going to be um, applied for, uh, for each out the output of each of the, um, each of the, the building block layers. 
so input and output, I should say. The first one is, has three channels, and we're going to output um, uh, 32 channels. And if you, uh, one of the things about the max pooling, since we did a kernel size of two by two, it will half the size of the image each time. So we start off with um, three by 32 by 32, and then we'll finish with 32 by 16 by 16. And then we'll have 32 by 16 by 16, and 64 by 8 by 8, et cetera. So once we have this object that can do this convolution and max pool, that's what we called building block before, we're just going to apply these in sequence. So we have these different sizes. This defines the sort of scales that we'll look at. And we'll just make a layer, sequential layer, that uses these in, in a sequence. And here we're using the list comprehension of Python. We'll have seen that in the labs before. If not on video, then in the text of the labs. And this argument here, star, that just takes a sequence and gives all of those as arguments to sequential. So this is really nice, Jonathan. In the, in the previous one with the MList, we did layer one, layer two. But here you can just programmatically specify the thing and just go in a loop and set up all these layers. Yes, it's, it, nice. it's much more compact. We would yeah. have had to have, each one might take four or five lines, so it would have been 20 lines instead of, well, yeah. six or seven. And then mm -hmm. at the end, we'll have 256 channels, and we're going to have to ultimately output that to 100. Um, uh, 256 channels, and it's going to be a two by two image. So at the, the final, the final output after the max pool will be 256 by two by two. We'll output that to 512, and then do a rel ReLU for good measure, and output to 100. That's the number of classes. And okay, once we specified our, our network in that fashion, uh, the training, etc., will be will be similar. Um, in this case. Uh, uh, we, we can, the summary is a little long, and, but it should be predictable on how to read it now. There are quite a few parameters now, almost, all almost a million, million parameters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we won't dwell on it, but we've used a sort of default training method for all of the, op all of the stochastic gradients operations so far. Um, Torch has several other variants of stochastic gradients, so we're going to use one of those here, but um, it doesn't, uh, well, that just that that uh, where is the where is the optimizer that comes into this uh, when we tell it's a classification problem we give this these extra this special optimizer but it's let's not dwell on that okay so we'll fit it as we have done all the other ones and let's take a look at how it's done well this one takes a little bit longer um, depending on your uh, hardware um, it can be this here says it took ten minutes or so on a pretty modern Mac uh, laptop with an M1 chip but that's not too bad. We only gave it 30 um, epochs, and you'd probably give it more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially if the accuracy is still improving. Let's take a look. Um, well, it looks like the validation accuracy is, is a bit leveling out, so maybe yeah. 30 epochs won't, won't be. Uh, won't, won't help much. I yeah. mean, anything more probably won't help much. Yeah. yeah. Training, of course, will get mm. better and better. OK. And so still 40% accuracy on a 100 class classification problem is pretty good. Yes, yeah, yeah. compared to the baseline of yeah. 1%. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think we, I think the, the, what's the current state of the art in the 70s for this data set, perhaps? I think so, yeah. So yeah. people tweak and, and tune these models forever and increase their accuracy. Yes. Eventually, there'll be, the field will overfit the data, even if yeah. the <laughs> any different method won't. Okay. Um, so the accuracy on test data is about 41%. Okay. There are a few other topics uh, on convolution networks. If you have, um, certain hardware, there are accelerations you can try. Um, and finally, one, one nice thing about uh, these models is that you don't have to just use your own computer sometimes to, to, eva to use them. You can sometimes use the work that someone else has done. So you can use pre-trained models. And uh, the Torch, um, Torch data sets include these model models called ResNet of various sizes. ResNet 50, I think, corresponds to 50 sort of max pool. I think that the 50 is how many, how many, layers how many com yes, yeah. convolution max pooling layers. And this was trained on a thousand class image classification problem. Yes. So you can uh, now apply, uh, pass in your own images and, and look at the, the different classes. So we have an example here about how to do that that we uh, encourage you to do offline. And these are, show, these are shown in the book. We, sh we sh show some photographs 
from a photograph album and, and actually classify them. Yeah. And, and I reckon and, I and we, we show the code for doing that, yeah. Yes.